Hey everyone, so today we're going to continue where we left off from the previous videos and we're going to build an example of switching from a splash state to a new game state. So I wanted to exemplify moving from one state to another. It's really easy and actually the whole purpose of this video can be summed up right here in this line. Uh, gsm.setStateGameStateManager.State.Play and what that does is it uses its enumeration values uh, in the state to be able to let you set which state you want the game state to load up for you and throw on screen. And that's really the only call you have to make because our game states do have a reference to the game state manager. So they do have the ability to control which state is getting thrown in and out whenever you want. Um, and as you can see in the splash state from the previous video, I added a few modifications, uh, such as this accumulator, which just collects the delta time between each frame update. And once it accumulates to about three, the game state manager will be told to set the state to the new state we'll be making today. Um, and the other thing I have it doing is just rendering a simple texture, like a splash screen texture, to the screen in the very center with a white background. So. Um, if we remember that we have our uh, splash state, I want to just add the play state, which is going to be the new state we're adding. And also down here, we're going to want this to be a new play state, and we'll send it uh, the game state manager reference. So with that being done, let's create our play state. And at first, this is only going to have just a different colored uh, GL clear bit set and I'll just make it light black just so we can see the transition time after three seconds into this state. Um, so we're going to want to have this extend uh, game state get the methods and then we want to create the basic constructor And we'll just call it GSM and then call the super class just like that. Just how we did in the uh, splash state, um, as you can see detailed here. And what else? So now we want to import the play state for the game state manager. And we just want to add that different color so we can tell we've entered that state by sending it a different bit uh, GL color. Okay, and we'll just set that to, let's say, 0.25. That should give us a nice gray. Um, let's see, with that, that should be everything. So if we run it now, we'll see our image show up on screen with a white background for three seconds, and then it'll switch over to the gray background in our play state. And that'll signify that we have switched states. Okay, one, two, three, perfect. So with that, we see the proper transition into that new state. Everything is working just fine. Um, and I think what we can do now is start taking out some of this application code that we had left over from the previous videos and moving it over into the play state to kind of get the idea that we can really throw anything into these states. Um, essentially, that small test project we we're working with where we made a tiled map and a box 2D world, we can just throw it right into that play state and it'll work just the same. So first thing we need to do is take all these variables here, uh, which were used for the box 2D world and tiled map, and just throw them at the top of the play state class. And then we can take this code here, which can be found in the create method of the main application class and throw that into the constructor of the state, which is essentially the create class of a state. Um, okay, and so that's good there. And we can keep moving down. We got our render code and we will just take that. Go to our play state, go to the render. Okay, then we can keep going down. We have the update methods. So 
take those and put those in our update. And then we'll want to grab our camera update method that we made. Just take the whole thing. Throw it there. And we actually never use the delta, so we can just remove that as a parameter. And then we can keep going on, get rid of that other update method because we did replace that in our render method of the main application, as you see here, with the GSM update and the GSM render. Um, what else? So resize, create box. So we need this method to create the body that we used. Okay. And just back space those and then we'll also want to do uh, some disposing like we did before. It is delegated to the game state manager to dispose of all of its states however each state is where you need to specifically st uh, say what you're disposing of. Um, so we need the world.dispose um, That first, then this, then the tiled map render dispose, and then the map dispose. Okay. Um, what else? So I think that should be everything. So we moved everything out of here that we didn't need anymore. We can get rid of that because that's not being used. Um, we got rid of that code. We can get rid of that comment. And with that, I think we've managed to migrate all that uh, project code from before, and we've neatly organized it away into this play state. And now that we have this nice looking hierarchy for our manager states, utilities, and then our main application outside, uh, we can start seeing a, a decent structure to our game that we're making. Um, so let's run it real quick just to see if we get the three seconds, and then jumping into the play state with the box 2D world, just like we had set up before. One, two, three, and there we go. Perfect, just the way we left it. Um, we didn't have to change any of our main logic code, any of our rendering code, anything. We can just shift it all over to the play state and it works just as we remember. So we'll close that real quick. Uh, do note that I did not add the input handling. Um, I'm going to be leaving that to another video where I'll be demoing like an input manager class or some, something of the sort, uh, input handler, to be able to incorporate all those movements and attaching them to players and everything on command. We'll try to figure out a decent setup for that, something to work with that'll be easy for us. Okay, and so with that, that's the end of this video, and I'll see you in the next ones.